Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Granite Real Estate Investment Trust or REIT stock. I will discuss their business, their future plans for 2022, their dividends, the risk associated with this company. And finally, I will provide a detailed stock analysis using my personal discounted cash flow model. And will then provide you with a fair value of this stock depending on your investment goals. The company HQ is located at Toronto and their shares are traded on TSX for almost 100 Canadian dollar at the time of recording this video. They pay a nice starting dividend with a yield of almost 3% and the market capitalization of the company is around 6.6 .6 billion Canadian dollar. An interesting fact about Granite is that they beat S&P 500 and S&P TSX for the last one year and even for the last five years in terms of their returns which is pretty amazing for a Canadian REIT. And it shows the potential of this uh, interesting business, which can not only provide you with monthly distributions as a REIT, but also capital growth in the long term. Before starting the video, I want to emphasize that I'm not a financial advisor and this video is not a financial advice for you to buy, hold or sell this stock. This is just my personal opinion and you should always do your own research before making any financial decision. With that being said, Let's start the video. Granite is a Canadian real estate company which can give you exposure to physical properties in the areas of logistics and industrial warehouses in North America and Europe. They have already diversified portfolio of various industrial and logistic properties in six countries around the world, including Canada, United States, Netherlands, Germany, Austria, and Czech Republic. I think they also started to develop new properties in Poland so as well, so technically they are operating in seven countries around the world. The largest tenant of Granite is Magna, followed by Amazon. And we can also see stable and large businesses like Walmart and Samsung among their tenants. They overall have solid tenants which can provide with predictable cash flow for future developments. Granite will continue to expand their business by developing new projects and also buying new properties across the Europe and North America in 2022. Here you can see some of the most notable properties that they, are, have, they have under construction or under development at this time. They actually did share dilutions in the past in order to fund their operation. And as you can see here, the total number of shares of the company increased by almost 50% from 2018 to 2020, which is not good. but. This is totally normal for REITs to dilute shareholders for future expansions. What matters to me is that they use these funds to grow their business and ultimately return value to shareholders via expansion and exponential growth. In the same period, we can see total assets and total equity of the company increase significantly, which means the management know what they are doing and they are creating value for us. As I mentioned in the introduction and in terms of the share price, Granite had a significant bull run in the past couple of years and they completely outperformed Canadian Real Estate Market Index, TSX Index and S&P 500. Just look at this beautiful chart and see the exponential growth of Granite in the past nine years. In, the ter in terms of the business fundamentals, they were able to grow their funds from operation or FFO by almost 25% in the past year and almost 9% year over year in the past five years which are amazing numbers for a REIT. In terms of the future of the business, they will continue to grow by developing or buying new properties. I would say it would be difficult to see the, the company continue to grow at the pace of 25% for long periods of time, but at least for the short term, we should probably expect similar growth numbers to, for, to the recent years. I would say close to 10 to 15% growth in operating cash flow of the company in 2020. Too, depending on how things are going in the economy. Overall, this is a, a great growth rate for this business I am, and I am optimistic on their future performance. The company has an excellent track record of paying dividend or I should say distribution as this is a REIT and increasing their distribution year after year. They recently increased their uh, dividend or distribution in 2021 by 3.3% and if we look at the history, they were able to grow their distributions by almost 4.5% on average each year for the past 5 years. This is an amazing number. They also pay their distributions monthly, which can be a plus for some of the investors who are looking for monthly cash flow. Regarding the dividend safety, I think granite distributions are totally safe at this point. 
as they pay less than 80% of their adjusted FFO, and they still can have almost 20% of their FFO to use for their growth and buying new properties. So I, I guess the dividend is totally fine at this point. Granted, total debt to capital is around 33%, and their cash flow to debt ratio is around 0.1, which are excellent numbers for REITs, to be honest, as REITs are usually grow based on taking on more debt. They are also highly diversified in various countries, which can further reduce the risk associated with their cash flow. However, the only concern I have is their exposure to Magna, which is almost 31% of their earnings. Magna is a stable business, but I still would love to see the, this number reduces to something around 10% in the next couple of years. It's overall a very stable and predictable business, and I'm not much concerned with, about the cash flow of this company. This is my favorite part of the video where I can show you my stack analysis based on the financial data I discussed in the previous parts of the video. I use a discounted cash flow model which basically estimates value of stocks based on projections for the future cash flows. So I make some assumptions about the growth of the company in the next 10 years and then discount the future cash flows into the present value of the stock based on my expected rate of return. So I start with the past four quarter FFO per share or funds from operation per share of the company. And based on three different case scenarios, I predict the future FFO of the company in the next 10 years. In the bear case or the most negative case for the stock, the company can grow 12% in the short term and then the growth will drop to 8% in the long term. The 12% growth is coming from growth in the business, the dividend and also the dividend, uh, the dividend growth itself. I consider a terminal multiple of price to FFO of 12 for this case, which is consistent with historical bear periods of this stock. For the normal case, I consider a little bit better growth and a terminal multiple of 18, which is the historical average multiple for this stock. For the bull case or the best possible outcome, I consider the business grew by 20% in the short term and then it drops to 12% in the long term. And I consider a terminal multiple of 25, which is the bull multiple for this company. For growth stocks, I usually expect 15% return and for dividend stocks or dividend stable stocks, I expect 10% return year over year. Uh, I give a 50% uh, chance to normal case, a 25% chance to bear case and 25% chance to the bull case here. And if I expect 10% return from this stock, as this is a dividend payer and a stable stock, the fair value of this company is, for, uh, is, uh, is $87. Canadian dollar per share, which means compared to current share price of almost 100 Canadian dollar, the shares are traded at 13% premium today, which is not a buy according to the model. It means if you expect 10% return year over year on your money, this stock is probably not going to deliver that 10% year over year return in the next 10 years. If I put 8% as my expected return, however, you will see that the current share price is at 4.4% discount for an 8% return. It means you can expect the company to return close to 8 to 9% per year at the current share price. It's always fun to see what analyst predictions are for the company and according to the Yahoo Finance, the analyst price target for this company is currently at 86.65 Canadian dollar per share for 2022 with a hold rating. I don't think these statistics are up to date here, to be honest, and therefore I look at another source. According to TD Direct Investment Analyst Tools, which is more reliable, the price target of Granite for 2022 is $107 Canadian per share with a buy rating, which seems more reasonable. At the end of the day, if you're looking for a stable, fast-growing company with monthly dividend payouts, Granite can be a stock to look at. Personally, I bought Granite when it was traded for around $80 Canadian, and at that price, it could deliver 10% year-over-year return. I would not buy Granite here as it cannot provide 10% return, but if you're happy with 8 to 9% return per year-over-year, it can still be a good buy. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and let me know what stock you'd like me to review next. And please consider subscribing to the channel to see similar videos. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Farewell.